because they still struggling with their yes. But I'm just gonna call your name who got the yield to yes. And go ahead and honestly tell them, I need that. I can't live without it. I can't sleep without it. I'm not even talking about it. Y'all ain't come to have church. Throw your hands up and throw your head back and stop power oh, Lord. Oh, I wish I had some strength in the building tonight. So you want to do something for God. Who will lift your hands and throw your hands
what God says I am. I am, I am. Come on, church. What God says. Come on, now. Everybody say, I am. I am. What God says. Come on, say, I am. I am. What God says. I am the head. I am the head. And not the tail. I am the power. But as you're going to your seat, let's shake hell, please. And as you're sitting down, would you lift your voice and clap your hands and give God a thunder of praise? Come on. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord. Okay. You're still struggling with your identity in the Lord. But the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord. The only person that can pray God at this moment is the person who believes that you know, that you know I am redeemed of the, of the Lord. Let's talk this one more time. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Y'all only praise them with, with music. I wish I had some sanctified vessels who understood that if there was ever going to be a shift in my life, it's going to be because I mustered up a praise that invoked the presence of God to come through and shift and transition everything concerning me. <laughs> Everything is about to shift. Go ahead and touch yourself and say everything is about to get better. I said everything. I said everything. Your money's about to get better. Your relationship is about to get better. Somebody shout everything. It's about to get better. It's happening for me.
Chuck just got a prank.
Give me, please, be seated. And on the way here, all night I tossed and turned because uh, Dahim, Pastor Dahim, one of my triggers was this. So I would call TJ. I would call, let me say, I'm coming in this week. I'll be there. And the closer it got, the more the devil began to work on my mind. So I began to back up and say, whatever happens, I don't want to go through that again. But I remember one night the Holy Ghost said, if you can trust me for that, you can trust me for this. Sometimes you got to learn how to step into stuff before you get it. Because some seasons of your life, you're going to have to first step into your victory. Because some victory is activated when you step in. On the way here, the devil say, uh uh, you ain't gonna be able to do this. Are you crazy? I said, devil, you a lie. And God is exalted. Second Samuel, just give me 15 minutes. I gotta give you this. You gotta be out of here. Yes. prophesy to those who receive it. Tell you that the only reason, God, that you're still standing is because God is not through with you yet. Second Samuel, chapter 6, verse 12, says this. Now David, the king, was told the Lord had blessed the house of Obed-Edom. Don't miss this. And everything he has. Let me see that again. Now the King David was told. The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom. And everything he has. Let me try that again. Now King David was told. The Lord has blessed. Y'all still ain't got it. Tom David was told that the Lord has blessed. Somebody shout, I'm already blessed. Not only the Bible says that, not only did the Bible says that Obed Edom has been blessed, it says everything has been blessed. Here is the point of my thrust. Because the ark of God. Hallelujah. Because the ark of God. I want to teach from the time allotted to me from this subject. It's time to reclaim it. It's time to reclaim it. It's time to reclaim it. Family, the scriptures are clear. Stay with me, I'll be quick. The scriptures are clear that, that we are all facing an evil adversary who is aggressively attempting to inhibit us from experiencing the life that God has intended. This is an undeniable scriptural reality that is unfortunate in and of itself. But what's unfortunate about the reality of this nature is that people don't even know it. They have explained it away. They have rationalized it, quasi and pseudo intellectualized themselves out of a scripturally supported understanding of the reality of the presence of evil in this world that is diametrically opposed to your progress. Uh, therefore, many people are experiencing opposition that we are either inaccurately understanding ignoring or mislabeling as coincidence, 
bad luck or an inability to get a break. Consequently, everybody listen to me. Each and every year we receive revelation about what you desire to do differently. And we make resolutions about what we would do differently. But we fail to see results and keep on misdiagnosing the problem. I'm arguing, I'm proposing, I'm contending that in some cases and in some areas our failures to see our desired results cannot always be attributed to the absence of willpower or the flawed nature of our, um, um, of our strategic plan or the inability to execute intentions. I'm arguing that sometimes, come on everybody, we are failing to see results because we have not taken into consideration the reality of the invisible evil force that is opposing your efforts to progress your life in a way that brings glory back to God. Jesus corroborates this claim in John 10, 10 when he says the thief comes to only steal, kill, come on, my church, and destroy. Jesus acknowledges in his existence and he clearly communicates his intentions. And throughout scripture, Jesus warns us of his intentions. And those who follow the ministry of Jesus, like the Apostle Paul, warns us of his intentions. When the Apostle, when the Apostle Paul tells us to beware of the wiles, the methods, and the strategic plans of the enemy. Why? So you won't fall prey and victim to them. I wish I had a church. Family, don't miss this. We can dismiss his existence, label it as unintellectual, uh, and we can suggest that we have an inferior hermeneutics or a infected exegesis. He wasn't really talking about uh, 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 an evil entity. Uh -uh, that is a fairy tale. That is a supernatural spiritual fairy tale. Uh -uh, uh, that is make believe. Uh, people only say that when they don't want to take action, when they don't want to take responsibility for their own actions. But can I suggest I want to argue, Rosando, that not to believe in the devil is to not believe in the Bible itself. Um, but you, because you cannot read destiny, you cannot read the Bible without seeing him in there. When you open the Bible in the book of Genesis, he shows up in the garden as a snake. When you close the Bible in the book of Revelation, he shows up as a dragon. And I came to tell you that just because you can't see something doesn't mean that it doesn't impact you. You can't see COVID, but you can catch it. You can't see the flu, but you can catch it. And I came to tell some and inform others that you may say, I'm not fighting the devil, but can I tell you that the devil is fighting you? <laughs> and the aggressiveness of his activity in your life is an indication of how uncomfortable he is with you stepping into the fullness and revelation of who God has called you to be. The aggressiveness of his activity is confirmation. Come on, that there is a future greatness that he's trying to stop you from stepping into. There is a future greatness that he's trying to stop before you grow into it. And this is why, family, he tried to kill Jesus through Herod as a baby. Because he had to stop it before he got mature enough for him to handle it. And I came to tell you that the devil knows who you are. But the devil is trying to stop you from knowing who you are. Because if you were to know who you was, then you'll know who he is. And if you know who he is, you'll know that you got power. I wish I was to get into a church that was something to the end of my life. I want to remind some and inform others that the devil is a thief. The devil is a thief. Pastor Watson, so when Jesus says the enemy comes, the thief comes. 
to steal, kill, and to destroy. Terrence, he means what he says and says what he means. But can I suggest that not only should we pay attention to what he's saying, but we should pay attention to the order in which he says it. We got to pay attention to steal. Because if you're only focused on the killer and obsessed with the destroyer, you'll miss the thief. And some of us are shouting off of survival. When the devil is saying, I didn't send that to kill you. I sent that to rob you. Some of us are in season shouting off of stuff that the, that the devil didn't send that to, to destroy you. But the devil sent some stuff in your life to rob. Because he is a thief. So while you're shouting on survival, you don't even know that he stole the peace. Because oftentimes, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know that you have been robbed. Because let me stop here. Because the devil is not like a burglar. He's more so like a pickpocket thief, nephew. He'll steal from you, and you won't know it's gone until you get in the season where you need it. And you reach back forward, and it's gone. Because he's a pickpocket thief. And oftentimes, you don't know that you've been robbed until you've been heartbroken and realize you need some peace and reach for it, and it's not there. You don't realize you've been robbed until you've had a bad doctor's report. The doctor told you you have an incurable disease, and you reach for joy and realize it's not there. I got some woeful, woeful news for everybody under the sound of my voice. You've been robbed. <laughs> You've been robbed. You've been robbed. And the enemy that had robbed you, mama, he's not a robber with a conscience. He, he's not a compassionate thief. You can't wait till the enemy gets a conscience to get it back. If you want to get it back, come on everybody, the only way you're going to get it back is if you read. What? Claim it. Okay, I thought y'all would have the sermon. I said the only way that you're going to get it back is if you reclaim it. Because the devil is not a conscious thief. He's not going to return it. The only way you're going to get your stuff back, the only way you're going to get your joy back, the only way you're going to get your peace back, the only way you're going to get your happiness back, the only way you're going to maintain your deliverance is if you read. Okay, y'all. I said you got to read. <laughs> okay, because uh, I know who I'm talking to. I know who, who I'm talking to. Because the only reason why only 30% of you were anxious to say that in that moment, because most of you in here ain't ready to reclaim it. Because it's not until you get tired of living without it that you. <laughs> I said it's not until you get tired of living without it that you're going to go and get it. Because when you are tired of living without something that belongs to you, you'll hunt it down. Do I got any hunters in the... the I said y'all, hunt it down. That's why some of y'all still sin. Because you don't mind sitting in dismay. You don't mind sitting in anxiety. You don't mind sitting in depression. You don't mind sitting in sickness. But I wish I had some hunters in the temple tonight who will stand up and say, I'm going after it. I'm going back into the enemy's tank to take back everything. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. But uh, there are three things about a hunter that I think is very important to bring to the forefront tonight, Nina. And that is a hunter is confident. A hunter walks by faith and not by sight. The second thing I recognize about a hunter is a hunter is patient. Those who wait on the Lord. I 
wish I had a church yet. Okay, y'all came for Kiki and not the word. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. A hunter, thirdly, and lastly, Rosando, is persistent. Oh, I wish I a hunter is relentless. A hunter is tenacious. In other words, the hunter is not the hunted. The hunter goes out. There are three levels. There are three modes of attack. The Bible says there are three modes of operation that the enemy operates in. He operates as a thief. He operates as a killer. And he operates as a destroyer. You've been so busy protecting your life and not guarding your heart. Because you've been trying to stay alive when all the time the enemy has been robbing from your heart. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if he can cause stuff to jump off in your life to attenuate your faith, you'll begin to perceive your situation like the devil does and not God. But if you guard your heart, the Bible says above all things, guard your heart. Why? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you thought that you were a victor, the enemy could never make you a victim. If you knew in your heart and believe with all your mind, body, and soul that no matter what, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. There is no bad season in your life that can happen that will stop you from giving God praise from the position of a victor and not a victim. Goodbye, everybody. Second Samuel. I'm done. Second Samuel reveals to us goodbye. Three minutes. I'm out of here. Second Samuel. Goodbye. Chapter six. The first thing that jumps out the text, Pastor Nate, is that it teaches us that you can't reclaim secondary stuff until you have reclaimed and identified. The first thing. The primary thing. Let me say that again. The text teaches us that you can't reclaim secondary stuff until you have reclaimed and identified the primary thing. See, you've been running after joy, hope, peace, and love, and happiness, but you haven't been chasing after the primary thing. Because everything you've been chasing after is in the primary thing. The text calls it the Ark of the Covenant, which is, come on somebody, which represents the presence of God. It's not the presence, but it represents the presence of God. There were three things inside the ark. Goodbye, everybody. There were three things inside the ark. But the Bible says, before I tell you what was inside the ark, the Bible says that David comes to a place in his life where he is where he is attempting to reclaim a precious possession of Israel. He is, he is attempting to reclaim something that Israel had lost because they got too familiar with it. Yeah. His attempt to reclaim something that Israel had lost because Israel started to mismanage it. <laughs> Israel had lost the Ark of the Covenant. Israel had lost the presence because Israel began to mismanage the presence. So the Bible says that David is now in this text attempting to reclaim presence. He's attempting to acclaim something that had been lost through mismanagement and through, and through familiarity. And I, I love this text because the ark again, everybody, represents the presence. It's not the presence, but it represents the presence. And there were four things. There were four. The ark is symbolic of something. The Bible, the, the Bible teaches us that there are four gold rings on this ark. Don't miss it. You missed this. You missed the whole sermon. The Bible says that there were four gold rings on each corner of the ark. There were four gold rings on each corner of the ark. The four gold rings on the ark was there so that a pole can go through them so that they can be carried a certain way. The ark had to be carried a certain 
way. And not only did it have to be carried a certain way, the ark had to be carried by a certain type of vessel. The ark had to be carried on the shoulder of a Levite. On the shoulder of people who understood what the power in being separate. And people who understood the power of being set apart. All right, 30 and up church babies. People who understood what it meant to be sanctified. Filled with the Holy It had to be carried by people who understood it's okay to be in the world, but not. And how they be carried the worshippers. And the reason why they lost the ark because they started carrying it wrong. The wrong people tried to carry the ark. And can I tell you, you can't carry the presence any kind. Y'all want me to quit? I'm out of here. You can't carry it any kind of way. The offer the, the, the text. And God gives Israel the Ark of the Covenant, not because he needed to, but because they needed something visible and tangible to remind them what God has said. God had to remind them, don't build without it. Don't fight without it. Without it, don't say I do without it, don't take a job without it, don't leave a job without it, don't leave nobody without it, and don't go to nobody without it. God has to remind them, don't do nothing absent of the presence, <laughs> don't do nothing absent. Of the presence. So at this juncture, the ark is gone and they reclaim it. And the Bible says that they begin to usher in the ark with a new cart. Wow. 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 Instead of the ark being carried by Levites on the shoulders, the Bible says they use a new cart. They use an ox to pull it, to pull the presence. And can I suggest that we are, and the Bible teaches us that they had the ark but didn't have presence and didn't even know it. You're having church but don't have presence and don't even know it. Skinny jeans and good sneakers, lights, camera, action, good musicians, good singers, but no ark. Churches, nice carpet, fancy dressing preachers, but no, but no ark. Big titles, big services, dancing and shouting, praying and wailing, running around the church. Go 
Teach the word. Go have in church. Goodbye. Goodbye. Go have in church <laughs> with no presence. Yes. And the evidence is when you look around and see who's dying. The kids are dying. Your family is dying. Your city is dying. Your friends are dying. Stuff that's connected to you that should be living is dying. Because the presence that you're supposed to have to revive is submerged under your private life. That's not really submitted to God. Because you can't have power with God and not, and not power to be an environmentalist. And I came to tell everybody in here who's been struggling with some stuff in your life that all you got to do is go back and reclaim the ark. Because once you get in presence, the end, there's nothing the enemy can do to stop you from going what God has called. Goodbye, for real. So last week, there were three things inside this ark. Three things. I preached already. There are three things inside the ark. There was the word, the, the Old Testament. There was the word, the Ten Commandments. There was Aaron's rod that had budded. And there was manna. There was the word. There was Aaron's rod that budded. And manna. Inside the ark. There was the word. There was Aaron's rod that budded, which stands for soup. Was stands for the supernatural, and there was manna, which stands for provision yes. in the ark. Say it again, rewind. In the ark was the word supernatural and provision. Say it again. In the ark, there was the word supernatural experiences and provision. One more time for everybody here. In the presence of God is the word supernatural occurrences and provision. But we've been trying to get it backwards. We've been chasing money. We've been chasing joy. We've been chasing peace. We've been chasing a word. When God, and when you chase it that way, you'll start to do things your way to try to get what you want. But if you just get in presence, you'll get the word. You'll get supernatural. And you'll get full. But it's only found in the presence. I wish I could preach it like I feel it. But I ain't got no more voice. But I just stopped by to tell you that the Bible says that David had heard that the Ark of the Covenant that he had dropped off at Obed-Edom's house. The Bible says that after he had heard that the Ark was blessing everything in his house, the Bible says David got up, went back, and reclaimed it. And I came to tell everybody, stand to your feet, under the sound of my voice, that everything that you need is in the, is in the presence of God. I came to tell you, and I'm going to my seat, that everything you've been chasing, if you ain't been chasing after presence, you're going to keep seeking, because everything you need is in presence. It's in the primary thing. <laughs> it's in the primary thing. It's in the presence. Well, 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 PB, how does this look practically? <laughs> how does this look practically? How do I reclaim presence? How do I go after it? How, how, what do I do? Well, some of you are under the impression that he wants to respond to the church. I think I'm much better to get out your seat. But the Bible says I'm stepping into the new territory. I'm stepping into the new chapter. I'm stepping.
lift your hands up. In the name of Jesus, I pray that strength. Receive this now. Oh, come on, open your mouth. Praise it. Come on, come on. Put the worship in the atmosphere. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Minor mode streams. Minor mode streams. Come on, put the praise in the atmosphere. You're not leaving here without it. See, the enemy allowed something to leave early, but this is when the breakout was about to happen. I said you're not leaving without it. A minor move with the rhythm. Come on. Get ready. God is about to come and see about you. Okay, that was three praisers. I said, God is dispatching angels. I said, God is dispatching angels in the atmosphere that is about to come and see about you. I said, God is dispatching angels that is about to come see about you. In the name of Jesus, I pray that there is strength in the room tonight. And if you need strength in the room tonight, go ahead and praise God for that. Thank you. That your people are receiving strength. I need some worshipers. I need some worshipers. I need some worshipers. Because I just said God is releasing strength. And some of you still looking at me and not receiving. Receive the word, accept it, believe it, and walk in it. I said, God is releasing strength. Turn up your praise. Turn up your praise. Turn up your praise. Now, I pray that you release strength. I pray that it will see you. That you begin to release healing. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there are some people in here who are dealing with some illnesses in your body. I see some, I see somebody dealing with some heart issues. I don't know who you are, but I pray in the name of Jesus that everything the doctor said should happen and that was gonna happen. You ain't gonna need no pacemaker. I pray the name of Jesus because this is an atmosphere of signs, miracles, and wonders. I declare that healing, I said healing, has hit your body. Diabetes, healing, has hit your body. Cancer, healing, has hit your body. Whatever you got going on, somebody declare healing has hit my body. I said declare it, healing has hit. Father, we thank you and we praise you. I thank you, God, that promotions are happening. I thank you that jobs are being opened. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you're coming up in your money. I pray for supernatural death cancellation. I pray for amending of marriages. Amending of relationships. I pray God that you'll do it. And that you'll do it expeditiously. In the name of Jesus. We decree it. And we declare it. And we seal it. With a praise. Come on, everyone, everybody. One more time, open your mouth, clap your hands, and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. 
sister in Christ. I love her so much. She's always, always at my side. Whatever it is, she doesn't matter. I can call her any time of night. She'll answer the phone. She'll fuss at me first, but she'll answer. And then, but when I get to it, she always has my back. Could you help me celebrate the Queen of Chester? Prophetess of the city. The beloved one. The virtuous woman, yeah. my sister, Prophet Rashida. Y'all can you please, please. First of all, you're looking at a mirror. We were planning this and she had surgeries. She had stuff dumping off in her life, but she kept going. And I had to stop it. I'll let her say her piece before we leave, but she has been a great support and a great, great, great asset to my life. And I want to publicly give God praise for her. I had We did this together. We did this together. Then we do it together. We did this together. But I want y'all to help us get some sleep tonight, okay? We're just a little bit short for where we need to be. And we, I wanted to bring somebody to just, I wanted to have this, we're going, can we do this again next year? Yeah. I, okay, that was five people. Can we do this again next year? Yeah. And every year we're going to get bigger and we're going to get better. So y'all get ready for next year. We're going to start planning next week. Because <laughs> y'all Negroes funny. Y'all, I'm telling you, y'all Negroes are funny. Y'all need time. So we're going to give you enough time that y'all can plan your schedules. And maybe we'll do something for the weekend. We'll bring some people here you want to hear, you want to see. And we're going to have a good time in the Lord. But I want y'all to help us for real. Get some sleep tonight. We're just a little bit short for where we need to be. I'm not big and I'm asking. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Come on, y'all. Where y'all eight mans go? <laughs> we asked that because you have not. And uh, we were very intentional to make sure that you had a beautiful experience in church today. I mean, we went all out. We got lights. We got cameras. We got the best. We got everything, number one, to make sure that when you came in here, you were comfortable from the door to the sanctuary. Did y'all not? It wasn't our greeters and hospitality team. Weren't they great? Can y'all give it up for our hospitality team? They are, I don't know where yet, they're around here somewhere, it's about 10, 15 of them, and they, and they probably got their shoes off and everything right now, they probably, wherever they are, but we love them, and we want to give a special shout out to them, and my sister Genesis, is she in here, Genesis Dorsey? She, she at the door, she's still working, but she helped us coordinate all of our volunteers, the hospital team, can y'all give it up for Sister Genesis? But I need y'all to do me a favor. I need y'all to help me out. I need y'all to help me out. I need y'all to help me out. And I'm going to ask. I'm not begging. I'm asking. I'm asking. Don't feel obligated. Please, don't feel obligated. I'm asking. If everybody in here who can, sow with me. Sow with me. I'm going to sow again, too. I'm going to sow again. Could you sow with me? Everybody who can. If you don't got it, don't worry about it. If you have it and feel in your spirit that you need to release it, in order to receive what God has for you, do that because there is something prophetic in a supernatural seed. There is a prophetic supernatural return. Come on, somebody. Uh, all those who can, can you follow me? Please help me with just a hundred dollar seed. That's it. That's it. That's no money. Some of y'all got thousands sitting in the bank and you ain't been in church all year and you ain't paid tithes all year. So consider this a down payment to the tithes that you owe to your church. <laughs> 
Amen, somebody. Uh, follow me, everybody, please. I'm not going to ask for five or six people. Everybody. Because I know it, at least it's about 100 y'all here left. I know all y'all have it. If you don't have that, I'm going to ask you in for $99.99. <laughs> If you got cash app, where my, where my uh, baskets at? Bring them in. If you got cash app, send the cash app to dollar sign KCC Ministry. Dollar sign KCC Ministry. Dollar sign KCC Ministry. If you don't have a hundred, I want you to get as close to it as you can, okay? As close to it as you can. Don't, don't y'all love us? Do y'all love us? No, for real, do you? That was three people. Do y'all know what we talk? Nobody loves you when you talk about money. Rashida, come stand with me. Maybe they'll they'll they'll, they'll help them. Uh, maybe they need to see a woman up here looking good. Can y'all help us? Not me. Can y'all help us get some sleep tonight and uh, to take care of everything that we have to take care of tonight? So I'm going to ask you, everybody who can, just stand to your feet. Whatever you have, you don't have the hundred. Say, Pastor, I don't got hundred, but I'm going to help you all out because I want to be back here next year. I, because I got what I needed. Now, this, it wasn't just entertaining. It wasn't just spirited. It was spiritual. Yes. <laughs> so do me a favor, everybody who can stand to your feet. If you don't, if you're giving by cash app, let me see your hands. If you're giving my cash app, let me see who's giving. If you're giving my cash app, oh my God, bless you. Dollar sign KCC Ministry. Thank you, everybody who don't who's not giving my cash app, but you got cash, stand to your feet. And I want you to come. From wherever you are, come from wherever you are and just give in the basket. If you have a credit card, if you have a credit card, come to my left. And you can give with your credit card. Right now, everybody who have a credit card, listen, you don't have a hundred. Just give the best you can. Please, no, ma'am, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I think we about did it. Credit card. Genesis, where are you? Credit card machine. Thank you. <laughs> now you are expressing. I know y'all helping me over there. Thank you so much. We got Pastor Nathan Jacobs in the house. One is one is Chester Vets. That's a miracle over there. About a month ago, I had got a text that my brother was in the hospital. He had a stroke. Was it a stroke or a heart attack? Had a heart attack. Look at him, still standing. Man, we have prayed for him. I'm glad to see my brother out today. Uh, of course, I mentioned my, my, my another dear friend of mine, Pastor Watson, is in the house, and his lovely wife. We all the pastor, um, sister of Michelle Prelo. Pastor Michelle Prelo, God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I don't know. This is Chester's mother. I mean, she's just. Uh, this is Chester. Y'all give it up for the one and only Mother Wortham. What, what she pulled back? Huh? Jacobs, Pastor Jacobs. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Pastor Jacobs is in the house. And to everybody. Elder Desiree Burke is in the house. Y'all give it up for Elder Desiree Burke. Bless you. Bless you, Lord God. Love you. Thank every all the pastors who showed up and came. God bless you. Can you give yourselves a hand for coming? Now this is big. I, did all right. I want to give this is big. We have uh, one of our best is in the house tonight. She just got promoted at Reach Gospel, one a, 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 a syndicated radio station. She's one of the station managers there. Y'all give it up for Sister Destiny. Diggs is in the house. I seen her stand up this with that white dress. Bless you. Wave your hand. She's responsible for us being on reach. She's here to cover us tonight. Thank you. And my mama is in the house. Y'all can come stand up, wave your hands. My auntie. There you go. I'm done talking. I'm going to turn over to my sister. My sister, God bless you. Thank you again for coming out, sister. Amen, amen, amen. We want to just take this time to just ask you when you leave, just make sure you take take a look at the vendors. I'm excited that all the vendors were able to support us. I'm excited that you came. Thank God for SGS Ministry and Kingdom Culture Church. I am thankful for you today. So if you can all stand to your feet at this time. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to take this time. If there's anyone in here that is not saved, we don't want to leave.
leave the place without making sure that everyone is covered. If you're not saved, we welcome you today to Jesus Christ. We welcome you today with open arms to Jesus Christ. Since we're all saved, let us pray. When all hearts and minds is clear. Most grace and eternal Father, we bless your holy and righteous name. We thank you so much for this evening, Father. We thank you so much for the preached word. We thank you so much for the songs from Zion. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship. We thank you for the opportunity for corporate anointing. We thank you so much for deliverance, for setting us free. Father, we thank you for removing bondage. God, we thank you to be able to come into the sanctuary one more time. Now may the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. Let the children of the living God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, wait, before you go, one more thing. If you guys, you don't have a church home, you don't have a church home, and you want to be a part of a ministry, we have a fine church here in Chester where this bald head guy, as you heard, preach tonight, the pastor. Hey. If, if you have need a church home, lift your hands. We'll receive you tonight. You don't have a church home, you're looking for one, lift your hands. We want to receive you tonight. All right, everybody's in the house. God bless you. I love you. Have a kingdom week. Amen, amen, amen.